We now come to the next debate, uh, Neglected Tropical Diseases. Mr. Jeremy Freud. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, this is an office, uh, chairmanship. And may I first declare my interest as chairman of the All Party Group on Malaria and Neglected Tropical Diseases. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Neglected Tropical Diseases, or NTDs as I'll refer to them from now on, are a group of diseases which affect more than one billion people around the world. They do not have the profile of malaria, HIV AIDS or TB, hence the word neglected, but they result in disability and death. And even for those less seriously affected, they bring chronic conditions which mean losses in income. These diseases include worms, the helminths, schistosomiasis, bilharzia, trachoma, lymphatic filariasis, which is elephantiasis, and leprosy. They're almost without exception the diseases of the poor. Mr Chairman, they're also curable. The World Health Organization's 2010 report found that approximately 90% of their burden can be treated with medicines administered only once or twice a year. This can sometimes be achieved for as little as 50 US cents. Treating and eradicating these diseases must therefore be at the heart of any programme to tackle poverty. Yet they have been, as their name makes clear, neglected over many years. This is changing. Institutes such as the Liverpool and London Schools of Tropical Medicine, Imperial College London and the Antwerp Tropical School, working with researchers and institutes in developing countries, have made great strides in the understanding and treatment of NTDs. Well, of course. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Point. I thank my honourable friend for giving way, uh, and I would congratulate him uh, for securing this uh, very important debate, uh, not least uh, because his knowledge uh, in this area is well recognised. Uh, would my honourable friend agree that we have a role as members uh, of Parliament to highlight neglected tropical diseases so there is adequate awareness amongst the public and the media and policy makers and ensure that we focus on reducing these diseases that kill millions every year? Well, I'm, I'm most grateful to my honourable friend for, for making that point because it is indeed extremely important and I'll come on to some of the reasons why it's so important, particularly in, in regard to efficiency of use of aid money, which is obviously a major public policy question. Mr Williams, governments, principally the UK and the USA, have in recent years begun seriously to fund work on NTDs. In the UK, this began under the previous government with an allocation of £50 million. And earlier this year, DFID announced a further £240 million over four years, which will supply more than four treatments every second for people in the developing world. And here I'd like to pay tribute to the Secretary of State and indeed his predecessor uh, from the previous government for recognising the importance of this work. And we're especially fortunate in having a minister who I'm delighted to see is responding to this debate, who has been a champion of the fight against NTDs, both when he was the previous chairman of the all-party group and now as a minister. Yeah. Drug companies have also made a very great contribution, working together with bodies such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. On the day that the UK announced its five-fold increase in its funding to commitment to tackle NTDs as part of a global partnership, all drug companies with NTD drug donation programmes pledged to sustain, extend or increase their programmes to the end of this decade. GSK, for instance, has already donated nearly 2 billion tablets of albendazole for lymphatic filariasis and will continue until elimination is achieved. It is also providing 400 million tablets a year free of charge until 2020 to deworm school-aged children in Africa. Johnson & Johnson is increasing its annual donation of mebendazole to 200 million tablets a year, again to tackle worms. Novartis is continuing its commitment to provide multidrug therapy against leprosy in a final push against the disease. And Pfizer will continue its donation of drugs for blinding trachoma until at least 2020, as well as donate the drug and placebo to a study on the reduction in mortality of children which, who have been treated with that drug. Sanofi, Merck and various other companies are also providing major drug donations. But it's, it's not only drugs which are important to Mr Williams, it's also vaccines. And here I pay tribute to the organisations uh, in particular, the Sabine Vaccine Institute, of which I declare an interest as a trustee of the UK charity, charitable uh, body of Sabine, um, which are developing vaccines to treat NTDs around the world. So we've come a long way in tackling these diseases in the past decade. 
The number of new cases of leprosy reported to the WHO has fallen every year since 2002, from 620,000 to 249,000 in 2008. The number of new cases of human African trypsomiasis reported to the WHO worldwide fell from 37,000 in 1998 to 10,000 in 2008. But there is still so much more to do, and it can be done. Three things, Mr Williams, are essential. The first is to keep up the funding. In the 1960s, malaria was on the retreat, but the world took its eye off the ball and it came back with a vengeance in the 1980s and 1990s. Malaria is now again being tackled, but at a cost of five to six billion dollars a year and after millions of unnecessary deaths. The lesson is that we need consistency and determination. If the UK has decided, as indeed it has and rightly so, that eradicating NTDs is one of the best ways to tackle poverty, then we should make this part of our work each year and every year until the work is done. I'm not asking for more money. DFID has already committed a substantial amount each year for the next four years. But what I do stress is that there should be no uncertainty about future funding, that DFID continues to be a reliable partner over several parliaments. At the same time, I would like to see DFID encourage other countries to begin or to increase support for the work. The USA has been a reliable funder for which we are grateful. It would be most welcome if they too could commit to stable amounts over several years. Then there are donors who have yet to contribute to this work. Could I ask the Minister to report on what he's doing to encourage others into the fold? Secondly, we need to support the countries in which NTDs are endemic to strengthen their health systems. The most important thing which I've learned in the past year as chairman of the all-party group is that it is only through effective grassroots health systems with committed, trained staff, often backed by community volunteers, that the fight against NTDs is sustainable. One-off treatment campaigns can be very effective and are necessary where systems are weak or do not exist, but the effects will fade unless they are backed up by permanent staff and clinics. The United Kingdom has considerable expertise in working with developing countries to strengthen their health systems, but it is vital that the countries themselves meet their commitments under the Abuja Declaration to spend 15% of their total budget on health. Few are doing this. I would like the Minister to let members know what the Government is doing to encourage our partner governments in these countries to keep their commitment under the Abuja Declaration. And finally, Mr Williams, we need to support research. I have been heartened, as Chairman of the All Party Group, to see both how closely involved and how generous several pharmaceutical companies have been in tackling NTDs in the way that I've outlined. But we need to work closely with them and the research institutes in the UK and elsewhere to ensure that there is a pipeline of effective drugs for all these diseases. Developing and bringing drugs and vaccines to market is extremely costly. And those who suffer from NTDs cannot afford prices which reflect the cost of that research and development. But while the market may not justify the cost of R&D, common humanity does. And that is where the British people through DFID can make a huge contribution. Mr Williams, we often speak about DFID doing this or the British government doing that. It is not. It is the British people who are making this work possible by their commitment to international development. I know that the voices raised against are often loud, but in my constituency of Stafford, I've met thousands of people who give up their time and money to support projects around the world, school children, scouts, guides, community groups, churches, and others. And when the British people see how it's their support through donations and through taxes that is helping to improve the lives of millions suffering from NTDs, they need to know that they are an essential part of this great endeavor. Um, thank you.